Hello, I think I've got a great video for to you today. I want to talk about the state of the hard drive in 2024. It's going to be kind of a talking video. I'll have some pictures up. So uh, I hope you enjoy and listen in. So first, some performance information. This is data that I personally have collected with my hard drives. So we have some SSDs over here on the left side. Um, some NVMe, some SATA based ones. Uh, I really should have labeled that. So like the Barracuda is a SATA, the Firecuda is a SATA, and then we have the Rocket 2 terabyte PC E3. That's a NVMe at uh, Gen 3 uh, by 4 speeds. This one is an NVMe. <clears throat> the 860 Evo is a SATA. The 980 Pro, the T-Force Cadia is my first Gen 4. And then over here on the right side, we have some hard drives, including up to... 20 terabyte hard drives. So it really uh, shows off just the speed difference in sequential writes, which is the only place that hard drives really, uh, I don't want to say excel, but are useful because they're absolutely atrocious at random. So then, then what are hard drives good for? So while I have my data up, hard drives are great for your storage solutions, bulk storage that you don't need to access very quickly because the price per terabyte is substantially better. For a 20 terabyte hard drive, a terabyte per dollar is 0 0.065 for a 20, and uh, for a 20 or 10 terabyte, it's 0 0.079 terabyte per dollar. And for a 6 terabyte, it's 0 0.06. While for an SSD, you're paying $200 for like a 4 terabyte, so it's substantially worse terabyte per dollar. So for $200-ish, you're looking at a 16 terabyte hard drive for $200. So that's a huge difference. If you're wondering about the data ones that are crossed off for SSDs, drives, hard drives, whatever, that I no longer own, they've been decommissioned, sold, died, whatever, something like that. Now, all of that said, there are a lot of innovations coming to the hard drive that are actually kind of exciting. So first and foremost are the dual actuator hard drives. Now what this allows to do is over here, this is from Seagate, two independent uh, read heads so that the hard drive is essentially split in two. So imagine a, let's use a round number, 20 terabyte hard drive. So half of it will be 10, the other half will be 10. And the computer will read it as two independent uh, 10 terabyte drives. So in theory, this allows you to get speeds upwards of 582 megabytes per second, as opposed to, as we saw from my graphs over here with hard drives, labeled in green, 285. So that's almost double the speed. That is a huge speed increase. But uh, right now, the only ones I use it are SAS drives, uh, and you would need specialized software to... Um, well, tweak the drives. So in theory, I'd love to have these things in my NAS because then I get full speed. But if you can imagine using these as they are like out, out of the box, so two, two 10 terabyte hard drives in one. So let's say you have a RAID 6. If one of those, one of these platters goes, then you have to replace the whole unit. So now you pull it out, your RAID 6, so this would be two drives in that you now are down two drives, even though you only pulled out one. So it just really weakens it out. So if software can be developed to essentially turn this into a RAID 1 and then um, have that RAID 1 be inside of a RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID whatever, then then this would be the perfect future, especially um, I, I, I've used Synology, but you know, any of the any of the NAS softwares. That would be the way to go. And then there's Hammer, H-A-M-R. Uh, this is a newer type of reading that's going on on the hard drive. So rather than being magnetic, it uses a blast of heat uh, pictured here. So you've got a magnetic reader and then you've got heat laser to heat it up so it allows for more fine-tuned uh, data readings on that hard drive to further compact it to allow for even greater storage capacities. But without advanced reading capabilities, so making the hard drives read faster, um, 
if a hard drive goes, it will take a substantially long time for the data to be uh, copied over to the new one while your array is potentially at risk. So uh, there are some fundamental weaknesses still with hard drives, but um, can't beat it for bulk, bulk storage. So hybrid solutions may be the future. And then the last technology is shingled. I am not a fan of shingled method. Basically what it does is original read-write, um, the tracks are substantially wider than they need to be. So shingled just allows things to uh, overlap a little bit more because uh, writing takes up more space than it actually needs to read. So in essence, uh, it it overworks your hard drive. So it'll read norm or write normally. And then when the hard drive is not in use, it'll go back through and start shingling these things so they take up less space and uh, basically causes more read writing on the hard drive to, to shingle it. So it's slower, it's not as fast, and I think it causes extra wear on the hard drive. I'm not a fan. And then I want to talk a little bit about like my hard drives and the way I use them. So I use them basically in a NAS in a RAID 6 type. It's Synology Hybrid RAID 2, which is similar to RAID 6. It's great overall. It offers um, read-write speeds across my network at like 350 megabytes per second, which is sufficient. But the main issue with hard drives is loading times. SSDs, when you open up a folder, everything is there instantaneously with hard drives. It takes a little bit of time for it to read, especially if there's a lot of objects in that folder, for it to load and propagate everything down so you can actually see what's there. And then of course, if that page is, the folder's been open for a while and you go to click on something, it takes a little bit of time for the hard drive to spin up again to then read what's in there. That is the main weakness of a hard drive other than its overall throughput. Hard drives also have the problem of basically being today's bottleneck. CPUs, especially if you're like encoding, doing video editing, that kind of thing, uh, are so much slower than the processor that SSDs are almost necessary for doing intensive that kind of work. Um, so hard drives are more and more becoming a bottleneck where it's just being relegated to bulk storage. And lastly, I wanna talk about usage on NASes. So let's say you buy a 20 terabyte hard drive. Well, you need to buy two so that you have a backup. So that essentially creates a RAID type one scenario, even if you don't read them together, you're, if you're backing it up. So now you're wasting one whole hard drive, one 20 terabyte hard drive to back up your data. So let's say you upgrade to a RAID five, right here. So let's say you have three hard drives. N is the number of drives. And oh no, one of the hard drive dies. But the problem is the capacity of the drives is so large that it can take a long time for the data to get written. And if you lose another drive in a RAID 5, then all your data is lost. So now, because drives are so large, you need additional redundancy. So now you upgrade to RAID 6. So now you're wasting two uh, of your hard drives. So generally speaking, the larger the drives, the longer it takes to write the data onto it again because you're gonna potentially have more data there. So in my general opinion, if you're looking at hard drives over 14 terabytes, you're safer going with a RAID 6 type scenario than going with RAID 5. Anything under that 14, I'd say 10 and under, you'd be okay going with RAID 5. And then this leads to backing up your redundancy. So now you need a whole nother NAS, or you would need a single array of hard drives of equal capacity to then back up that main NAS. So now you have even more hard drives. And well, this is where SSDs come in, right? They're fast, they're reliable, even SATA-based SSDs are faster. And the terabyte per dollar is coming down uh, for most SSDs, four terabytes and under while four terabytes and over tend to be insanely expensive. When briefly looking terabyte per dollar, for ter four terabyte, it's uh, 0.0105, uh, 0 0.008, and 0 0.01667 for a two terabyte, uh, for an, while for an eight terabyte, it's 0 0.0089. So in other words, the smaller the number, the, the worse it is for ter ter 
terabyte per dollar. And 8 terabyte SSDs tend to be 800 to over a thousand dollars. So just to match a 20 terabytes in capacity, you're going to need three of these SSDs, and that's without any redundancy. Now to match three 20 terabyte hard drives, you're going to need six by eight SSDs. That's close to six thousand uh, dollars. Five for storage, one for redundancy. Uh, this is fairly impractical and insanely expensive and outside the realm of anybody who isn't a uh, professional and basically being paid to do it for a living. Uh, transfer seeds are fast enough that you could get away with only one redundant drive because the likelihood of that downtime where everything is being uh, written is going to be substantially less than with hard drives. There will be less wasted space, but the total cost of the system will be substantially higher. Hindsight is 2020, and I forgot to put this into my uh, Word document. So some quick math for a RAID 6 40 terabytes. Hard drives, four 20 terabyte hard drives is around uh, $310 for four, so that's 1,240 multiplied by two for its backup, and that's 2,480 in just drives. Uh, assuming $900 for a terabyte SSD, SSDs, you need seven a terabyte SSDs, seven times 900 is 6,300, and you still need a backup, so I would go with a hard drive backup because, <laughs> wow. And if you want to save a little bit, go with RAID 5, so that's 6 by 900, and that's $5,400. RAID 6, if you went with 4 terabyte SSDs, well, you'd need 12 by 200. That's $2,400. That is substantially better. Let's say you went with RAID 5. That would be 11 of them by 200. That's $2,200, so not significantly different. And then you would still need hard drives to back up the system. And then more drives in your RAID system will... Uh, indicate a higher likelihood for one drive to fail, more than one drive to fail simultaneously, just the nature of having more in there at once. So you need redundancy, backup. Uh, I don't know what like professional service use, but it's got to be more than one, two, one or two drive redundancy. It's, uh, or they may be using like a RAID 5.0 or RAID 6.0, which, um, let's go back to my PowerPoint. And RAID 5.0 is having two RAID 5s in a RAID 0. So the, there'd be two RAID 5s operating separately, each one having one redundant drive. And then they connect into a RAID 0, so they're both read simultaneously. So if one drive goes on one and one drive goes on the other, everything goes perfect. But if two goes on one, then you lose everything. So uh, that type of system exists. So where does this leave us? with the hard drive. They're still perfectly capable of video playback, meaning your bulk storage, uh, ripping your DVDs, Blu-rays, whatever, onto your hard drive, and then reading them off of that. They still have perfectly good transfer speeds for handling that sort of thing. And they can even handle uh, ripping your own movies and encoding it onto them. Uh, new hard drives are on the horizon with dual actuators, so that's really cool. They will have the potential to significantly speed up hard drives and make them operate at a higher efficiency. Now, personally, on my system, I use NVMEs for the OS and for my game storage. I don't have that many games. My game library isn't that substantial. If your game library is huge, I would say you want a hard drive for your older games and probably your NVMe for modern, newer titles that can actually take advantage of it. The way things are in this world, I see us needing both hard drives and SSDs to maintain affordability within your computer. Well, that brings me to the end of this video. Um, I hope it was informative as to my thoughts on hard drives and the state and their state of using them in 2024. I do like my hard drives for my bulk storage. Um, this is one off for me, so I had a little script and went through it as best as I could. If you've got suggestions for me, I am willing to that feedback to try to make them this type of uh, informational video better um i have a patreon page i join me as a youtube member hit that subscribe button uh if you want to discuss whatever hard drives fans computer cases with me i've got a discord page all linked and other than that, have i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time here on computer tech and more